us to the second episode in a series of 12 episodes that are focused on the August 2023 Mathematics Paper 2. So just take note that we've done Mathematics Paper 1 from the August 2023 exams. So you just need to go and check from our YouTube channel. So let us move straight to question 2. So two elites in a geometric progression, the second term is 21 and the fourth term is 189. Calculate them. Loma numeral 1 first term and the common relation. Loma numeral 2 sixth term. Loma numeral 3 sum of the first five terms of the progression. So let us start with question A. So when you got question A, what have we been given? So we've been given the second term, which is in this case n is equal to 2. Then the fourth term in which n is equal to 4. The question is asking us to find the first term and the common relation. So, number number 1, we know that a geometric progression is given by t n is equal to a, which is the first term, then r, which is a common relation to the power n minus 1. So, the question is asking us to find a and r. So, let us substitute what we know. So, when n is equal to 2, so we have n is equal to 2 on the second term, then the value of the second term is 21. So, it will be a then r to the power 2 minus 1 is equal to 21. Then, simplifying the power, we have a r is equal to 21. This is the first equation. The second equation is when n is equal to 4, the value is 189. So, what we have is a r to the power 4 minus 1 must is equal to 189. Then a r to the power 3 is equal to 189. This is the second equation. So now to find the value of a and r, which is a common relation, we need to solve these two equations simultaneously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the first one. So I'll make a the subject of the formula. So I'll divide by this side I'll divide by r. So I'm going to have a is equal to 21 over r. So I've just divided by r by r like this. So that this one and this one cancels, then we remain with that. So that's how the first equation becomes. So once the first equation becomes like that, then the next thing is to get the first equation and substitute it in the second equation. So whatever there is a, we are going to put this expression. So we are going to have 21 over r to replace this a, this a, multiply by then r to the power 3. So this one remains the way it is, this part, because we are substituting this one within what a is based on the first equation. Then this must equal to 189. Then we multiply. So what we notice is r into r is 1. r into this one is r square. So we remain with 21. r square is equal to 189. Then we divide by 21 by 21. So r square is equal to 9. So now, if r square is equal to 9, what it means is we can find the value of r by finding the square root of r square, then also the square root of 9. So the square root of r square is r. What's the square root of 9? There are 2. A positive or minus, because 3 times 3 is 9, and negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So r is equal to 
positive 3 or negative 3. So now, since we've known what R is, then we can find what the value of A based on this expression, this one. That's what we are going to do. So, A, so let me start with R. So R in this case is equal to 3 or negative 3. Then A is equal to, we have 21 divided by 3. So this will give me 7. So when R is positive 3, A is positive 7. So this is R1, then this will be R2, so A1. So what will be A2? Then it will be 21 divided by negative 3, which is negative 7. So we know the value of the first term. So the first term is now a 7 or negative 7. Again, this one it will be common ratio to be positive 3 or negative 3. They will be paired. So if you go with common ratio to be 3, then the first term should be positive 7. If we go with common ratio to be negative 3, then the first term should be negative 7. Once you do that, you would have answered the first equation. Then, since we know the R and the first term, then the equation, general equation becomes Tn is equal to, the first term is a 7, because A is a 7. So, it will be 7, then 3, N minus 1, that's the power. Or, we have T n is equal to negative 7, then 3 to the power n minus 1, but this need to be negative, because remember they are paired, so n of that will be correct. So, just to test, if we are getting the second term to be 2 minus 1, which is 1, then this power will be just 1 to be 7 times 3, which will be 21. Even here it will be 2 to the power, 2 minus 1 is 1, negative 3 less to the power 1 is negative 3 times 7 to be 21, so it's, it's odds. So we have these generic functions. Then the sixth term. So what is the sixth term? So in this case now we're finding lemma numero 2 to be t 6 is equal to 7 then 3 to the power 6 minus 1 which is equal to 7 then 3 to the power 5 so 3 less to the power 5 is 243 then we multiply these two we are going to end up with 1701 as the answer so you just need to pick one. If you use this one, you still end up with the same answer. So once you do that, you are good to go. Lemma number three, sum of the first five terms of the progression. So the sum of a given number of terms is given to you on the second page of your question paper. So just in case you forget, you notice that we have these two cases. This is the case where R is less than 1. In this case, we have R is greater than 1. So because our R is 3, we are going to go with a 3. So we need to use this function. So let us now go and find the answer. So this will be Loma numero 3. So the sum of n term given by the first term then r to the power n minus 1 over r minus 1 then where r is greater than 1 so now in this case the sum of the first five terms remember the question is asking us the first five terms so the first five terms is equal to what is it the first term is 7, 
then we have 3 to the power 5 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. So we have 7. Now remember just from finding this one is 243. So it will be 243 minus 1 over 2. So this, when simplified, will give us 8. 47. So 847 is the answer. So let us move to question B. Given that matrix P has the first element on the first row 7x, then the second element on the first row negative 2, then the first element on the second row negative x, then the second element on the second row is 1. Find the value of x for which the determinant of p is negative 10. So again, this one is a question that always comes. If you are given a matrix saying a is equal to, we have a, b, c, d. The determinant of this matrix, which is given by that, is given by a, d, we multiply them, minus the multiplication of b and d, c. That's the principle that we use. So because based on this principle, so to find the determinant of p, it will be this one multiplied by that one, then from that we subtract the multiplication of this one by that. So we are going to have 7x multiplied by 1 minus negative x multiplied by negative 2 this must equal to the determinant, and the determinant is negative 10. Then you have 7x minus negative x multiplied by negative 2, you see, 2x is equal to negative 10. So this tells me that 5x is equal to negative 10. Then we solve for x, I can use this space, so it will be x is equal to negative 2. So just dividing me by 5 both sides. So find the value of x. So since we know the value of x, we we'll get these two marks. Then, lemma number 2 ends find the inverse of p. So let us first of all start by substituting to find the matrix p. So it will be negative 2 times 7. We are going to have negative 14. Then we have negative 2. Then we have negative 2 times negative 1 to be positive 2. Then we have a 1. So this is matrix P itself. Then we want to find the inverse of that matrix. So again, to find the inverse of matrix, let's say A, which is this one. To find the inverse is A, we need to find the determinant. We should divide into 1, then multiply by so now what happens is you swap A and D, D. You swap, that's the first step. So D here, then you're going to have A. Then you will get B and D, C. And once you do that, you would have found in the inverse. So to answer Loma number two, what I need to do is to find now P inverse. So it's 1 divided by the mat, the determinant of P, which is negative 1. Then we use the sum principle. So now, whenever there is negative 14, we are going to put a 1, we are swapping. Then whenever there is 1, we are going to put negative 14. The first step. Then we negate negative 2, so it becomes positive 2. Then we negate this one, it becomes a negative 2. So this is the inverse of P. Once you do that, you are good to go and you get the 8 marks on question 2. So thank you for joining me in this episode. Please join me in the second episode as we look at question 3.